people are joining. Great. Okay. I think we can start. The streaming is so we are live. Great. Hello, Facebook. Okay. Quick intro about coronavirus. I will do it in English. I will do it in English so you also understand what we what we're doing. Hello Susan, hello Facebook. I uh, will have this virtual hangout in English. Uh, so I'll introduce for all our international fans what Grunavirus is about. So Grunavirus is about ideas, diversity, and growth. And um, Grunavirus is actually a community that is uh, founded and led by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, also for people who want to uh, try out new things, implement ideas, and start companies. What we do, I will translate on hard, uh, at hoc, on the fly, we inspire, activate, and iterate together. So we have wonderful people like Maria today who inspire to do community building or start a company. Uh, we provide essential skills to activate and um, to kick off your thinking and that you can start acting on your and executing on your idea. But also, if you have ideas, if you want to connect with the network, we can iterate on, on that so you can become better. We are a community and um, you can join our team when you want. What, like We are very open, so please reach out and uh, connect with us. All right, so I think that's it. On, on my side, let's switch to the exciting part. Today, we have um, Maria Gabriela from Athens, Greece, Involve Entrepreneurship. Hi, Maria. Welcome to uh, the Grunivers Hangout. Hi, everyone. Sergei, thank you so much for the invitation. And um, it's, it's great seeing the amazing stuff you do and helping the, the ecosystem. Um, I've been following you for years now and your team, and we see the impact. And the connection with your team is like from day one, uh, a perfect match, let's say. Yeah, thank you. So we connected on in Cologne where it was about like meeting ecosystem builders and we're still connecting and uh, looking forward for this uh, for the same. So the reason why I'm reach out, reaching out, so our talk is about uh, learning. We want to learn about ecosystem building. Mm -hmm. I think as a, as a starter, you, it's the best when you introduce yourself, your organization, uh, the impact, and I think you can share the screen and yeah. let's kick off with that for uh, for five minutes. It's just three slides, so it's going to be something easy for everyone and myself. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay. Okay. So. So I hope it's working. Yes. Perfect. A bit about myself. Um, I'm a startup and olive oil enthusiast. I'm project manager and financial analyst at Involve, Involve Entrepreneurship. I'll tell you a bit about Involve in the next slides. Co-founder of One and Olive, um, a business in traditional entrepreneurship sector in olive oil business with a lot of innovation though in here. Uh, and former member of city council here in my local uh, region of Nazmini. Um, I've been supporting ecosystems uh, since I remember myself, especially in my professional life. Um, the ecosystems I'm involved in are, are in startups, uh, mostly in Greece and innovation, agrotech, civic engagement on local and EU level, and sports. Um, about Involve, um, Involve Entrepreneurship is an NGO that supports startups in, uh, mainly in Greece and the US. Um, our team here in Greece is uh, active since 2012. Uh, during, you know, the economic recession. So it was a great challenge for us to kind of see how the Greek ecosystem evolves because when we started, there was basically no ecosystem. Um, Involve offers, uh, it operates in three different pillars. It's education, resources, and awards. Under education, we hold webinars, uh, workshops. We offer good reads. Uh, we have a word of the week, uh, let's say, for people that are not, uh, that they don't know about, um, you know, startup uh, terminology and financial terminology, we give that information. Uh, we're slowly bringing entrepreneurship in schools uh, to students. We do a road trip around Greece, um, 
building, helping build ecosystems, local ecosystems around Greece. We offer resources for free, business plan generator, uh, entrepreneur toolkit. We've created a survival kit during the coronavirus as a response to the um, pandemic. Um, we host meetups. And of course, on the award side, which is you know where the big numbers come for us, um, uh, we started as an award, uh, as Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award. And we offer funding, mentorship, and pro, you know, business support services. Um, from the award side, um, next slide, um, we're nine years of uh, support in Greece, of start, startup support in Greece. We have awarded 75 winners and finalists. Our 31 winners are from 19 different sectors, I think from nine different cities, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we've offered uh, over five and a half million euros to these startups, to these businesses, and their, their business uh, valuation exceeds 300 million. And we've engaged with over 30,000 entrepreneurs. And for the ecosystem, as involved at least, uh, let's say more active is, of course, we have our monthly after work drinks, start your night up, where we connect the whole ecosystem, um, bringing them together. Uh, involved on the go, it's our ecosystem building our tour around 20, over 20 different cities each year uh, in Greece. Entrepreneurship in schools and our webinars and resilience kit that uh, we offer to the ecosystem. So that's basically it. Cool. All right. Uh, so how, how long have you been uh, engaged with uh, Involve? Since 2014. So do the math. I think it's seven years. <laughs> it seems like forever. It seems like I've, uh, you know, I've been part of the founding team. Hmm. Um, I remember, uh, like, uh, we had this discussion and you mentioned it briefly that when, when you started, there was no ecosystem. And I remember you mentioned uh, that you've seen how things have changed, right? From nothing to uh, like 30,000 entrepreneurs that you have, uh, that you engaged with. So on the high level, before we go into the details, on the high level, what have you observed in, in this um, seven years uh, changing? I, we've seen huge differences, especially on a cultural level. Um, you know, it, it, Greece used to have a, like a kind of, let's say, hostile environment for those who are interested in entrepreneurship and especially in startups, because it's something that, you know, the, 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 you know, the basic people wouldn't understand. So uh, speaking about startups and entrepreneurship, uh, you know, they would say you're a poser, you're bringing a U.S. kind of lifestyle in Greece. It has nothing to do with Greece with Greece, you're not going to succeed, you will fail hardly. And, um, you know, starting that discussion during the, the crisis, where there was no liquidity. And after a couple of years, we had the capital controls and that stuff. It, it, it is a crazy man's dream, or woman's dream. So uh, we've seen a drastic change on cultural level of acceptance by, you know, the, 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 the basic uh, uh, people of our you know, economy. And of course, by the, 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 let's say the government itself, they have trust in startups and its impact that it can create for um, um, our economy and elevating, let's say, our, our economy on, as a strong asset uh, at the EU level and potentially a global level. Yeah, it's interesting that you connect the cultural level with, with, with uh, a government and economic impact. I think um, this is also what we observe because we are kind of a bottom up movement and not like top down. We have, we need to have this kind of programs that a culture plays uh, a huge role. Do you have like specific examples or experiences where you have, uh, where you have seen or observed this, uh, the, the cultural shift? It might be kind of a local community or, or a startup where you've seen that this hostility was not present anymore. It was kind of more empowering. Um, I have hundreds of examples like that, dozens of examples like that. Um, well, let's start from saying that um, when we when we began um, hosting an annual award, awarding startups, it was just a couple of uh, similar organizations. Um, and after you know a few of such initiatives, you would see this the, the ecosystem kind of scattered not united, not under a common goal, um, not creating tangible impact collectively. 
each each part would do their thing, or create their 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 own impact, but not into a in a greater perspective. Um, but we've seen that slowly, especially from a bottom up level, these different kind of forces, different kind of groups started collaborating, um, exchanging ideas, resources, networks, and we can see that they're slowly creating collective intangible impact. And, and this is something that is kind of shifting the higher level of uh, key players, government, banks, uh, large institutions. Um, and it's something that um, the ecosystem itself created. It's, it, it is a bottom up uh, uh, process. Of course, there are organizations like ours that um, were there to offer its support. But of course, we can do, we can, let's say, it reminds me of the Inception, the movie. You give them the idea, but it's up to them what they're gonna do with that. And with the resources that we offer and the tools that we give and the education that we provide, it's up to the ecosystem itself, how they're gonna use it and um, leverage on it. Right. Um, one last question before we go into details. You said that you, you observe a sense of a common purpose, common goal. Can you put it in, in words? I mean, it's, it is probably a process, but mm -hmm. what is the, this status quo at the moment, this, this, this common goal, common purpose. Okay, this is, I'm not sure. I'll try to explain it um, uh, as accurate as possible. I think the common goal is um, to attract more resources for the ecosystem. So it can kind of scale up on an EU level, especially um, to, to, to be more extrovert and create visibility because there was a lot of distrust in, in anything that has to do with Greek entrepreneurship, um, especially when you, know, you wanna attract investments. Uh, there were a lot of investors that did not want to invest in Greek businesses. They thought it was a high risk. There was no credibility and it, you know, the media, the, the, the global media didn't help at then, back then uh, during the recession. Uh, it were the bad Greeks that were taking uh, advantage of the EU funds. And so that's the, the, the mentality investors had. And due to the country risk, they would usually ask Greek startups to um, create, um, let's say a different legal uh, vehicle uh, entity in other countries, in the US, in Ireland, Cyprus, not Cyprus that much, in different countries. So their investments are safe. So that created, let's say, a kind of a hostile environment for these Greek startups to to network and expand. And now our common goal is to go outside together, reach out to global networks, uh, share our innovative approaches, and you know, have a, a credibility at specific uh, industries. It's, wow. I mean, that's a lot of progress within such a short period of time from a non-trusting environment, you, you mentioned hostility to having this common goal and, and, and vision going out and connect with international uh, like going internationally because the this trust i think changing from hostility to trust uh, so it's a lot of work so um i'm totally amazed by like it's kind of seven years that you turned it around uh, not only you but the the, the whole ecosystem oh. so yeah so um i have three main themes uh, noted down. So the first one is like you have seen uh, the team or the organization like 6,000 business plans. Um, so it was probably also a process when you started when you thought, okay, this is how ecosystems are built. We should do this and that. And like there were many learnings. Um, and I would like to start with this huge amount of business plans that were reviewed. What what were the key learnings from, from that? Um, how to support startups? Yeah. I personally have seen over 6,000 business plans. I think my team collectively, it's, it's almost... It's you expensive. personally reviewed 6,000 yeah. business plans? Wow. <laughs> <You know. laughs> wow. Some, some are an advanced level. Some are at an idea stage, of course. Of course, but... Uh, They're not okay, all perfect. All. Okay. But, um, you know, my team, uh, especially those that are longer, for a longer period at the Alexander Nusis, Jimmy Stefanosopoulos are longer, 
at the organization and ran the organization, um, they've seen, I think, more than 7,000, 8,000 um, business plans. Um, and, you know, as a team, we meet, we've met with tens of thousands of uh, entrepreneurs, not just startups, just entrepreneurs in general. So it's, um, and, and especially here in Greece, but we 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 are increasing our presence in EU and uh, the States as well. Of course, our, our team in the States, it's a totally different level, um, which of course there they have strong presence as well in underserved communities. Well, what, 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 what we had, we observed um, through the years, uh, of course, we've seen the level of, you know, the, the quality of the business plans have changed drastically as well. You would, you can tell by the way that they created these business plans, our application is like a shorter version, a lean version of this business plan. Um, now they're specific to the point. They know what they want to do with the funds that you provide them and the support that you provide them. They value a lot networking and mentorship because, you know, you can find money, but you want smart money. You want that whoever offers you funding will bring their network, will bring their their uh, experience with them and their insights, industry insights. And um, we've seen that change in, in the applications as well in our business plans that we review that these people, of course, they're out for money, but they're out for people to connect them with the market. Um, and uh, what we've also kind of uh, focused on is um, the, 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 the business plans from different industries and um, what are the key differences of, of these businesses across industries. So we would see, of course, advanced business plans that have to do with um, FinTech. Uh, we would see those that are in health tech, they would probably, they, they don't, they might not have the go-to-market, uh, um, uh, let's say process well thought out. And uh, in agrotech, um, they would have like some issues on financial uh, planning. So we could see the, 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 let's say the strong and the less strong points across industries and kind of focus our, um, our activities um, based on these points. All right, so it, you, it cannot, like, you can't offer yeah. the same things to everyone. Each, yeah. each, each industry, each sector has specific needs. Um, they need like, uh, they might need different kind of uh, handling. Yeah, so um, seems like there are more kind of um, general uh, general learnings or improvements, what you have observed, and also like every vertical needs kind of some specific support that is not cross vertical, right? They're probably cross vertical and uh, vertical related um, aspects. Uh, but it's interesting, would you say that I mean, mentoring, at least uh, in Germany, is highly, highly undervalued. Uh, people are very, they almost fear to, to exchange their experience. So uh, how, I think this is an aspect that is both, like there's a lot, so much value in mentoring by industry experts um, that I believe this is one of, one of the keys to uh, like developing success, uh, successful uh, company. Ha have you observed what has changed there? Because on the one side, you said the cultural shift, right? This trust, et cetera. And then you have mentoring. Where are you connecting internationally or where you're connecting um, in English? Yeah. Well, it's some, somewhere in the middle because mm -hmm. we had a cultural shift in that part as well. Because um, a lot of, especially uh, professionals with uh, great experience, uh, we had like LinkedIn presence, social media presence, but whenever you sent them an email or a message on social media, they most, most of the times they wouldn't even respond. <laughs> yeah. So um, that, that is changing. Uh, people are more extroverts. Uh, they, they understand the value of exchanging insights, especially those that have large experience in the market. They have a lot to win, let's say, uh, from startupers and people that are in the innovation industry, different mentality, methodologies. So they, they understand the value of um, being close with people in the startup community. And of course, it's gotten a lot easier for those seeking mentors. And, and, and the community has created, let's say, 
different organizations that can kind of facilitate mentorship. So okay. it's easier to access a pool of mentors for your business. Um, uh, mentors here in Greece are basically on a local level or, you know, Greeks from the, from the diaspora, um, but that's changing as well since, um, let's say entrepreneurs here in Greece, startups are, I guess, more confident to reach out to, um, let's say, global contacts. Okay. Um, and one, one question, like, like if, if you are honest, what contributed to improvement of the quality? Like people think more structured about how to bring the idea to the market, how to bring the product, how to develop, what are the next steps? What, what was it the... The supply side that you say, okay, offer a lot of knowledge, or was it um, the mentoring part that uh, kind of contributed to, okay, you have to focus on this, you have to focus on this because it's relevant for the market. Maybe it's a mixture, but when you are kind of, um, if you can differentiate that, that will be very helpful because uh, yeah. there's a lot of supply, right, on, on, on content. Um, maybe oversupplied. Yeah. Um, what I believe that um, what changed the ecosystem and helped it kind of, uh, let's say, advance, um, of course, were the resources, you know, with the different funds. Most of them were EU-backed, uh, Jeremy funds, equity funds right now that are running um, in the IF now, um, which kind of, offered the opportunity to start uppers to create a go-to-market product, an MVP, so they can understand the concept of, you know, the proof of concept process. Yeah. Because there was a lot of innovation in labs and let's say businesses and ran by professionals in the market that didn't have a way to kind of uh, bring that innovation in, in the market and mm -hmm. um, to, to consumers. So these funds uh, were a way to kind of help them get into the market, fail a couple of times, so they can, let's say, create more robust um, businesses. And you know, with the mountain funding that uh, was, in, especially in the beginning, um, they understood that it's not the, the amount that you offer them, but it's the smart money, as I told you, as I mentioned yeah. earlier. Okay. And, bootstrapping you you don't waste it every you don't waste all the funding that the resources that you receive for marketing or a strong uh, online presence you want to use it on you know creating a strong product testing it in the market and then scaling it up um, to different uh, industries or markets as well in other countries so what we've seen is that these startups are now more market driven they under, they, they understand that they have to focus on what the market needs what the consumer needs, what their clients needs, or their partners needs. And um, I think this is something that they had to learn the hard way. Of course, the mentorship was there for, for some of these companies to understand that before wasting money or failing. Uh, but um, most of these companies had to kind of grow the hard way. And this is yeah. where I think how the, the market kind of, the, the, the industry changed. Great, I, I think that's a great answer. Uh, to follow the market, uh, fail, and then learn from that. Um, last question here, and then we we'll move to, uh, to ecosystem projects. Um, how do you approach this smart money? Like, do you give advice? I mean, you cannot say, okay, we have this uh, VC firm, they are smart and they have money, right? Yeah. How, how, how do you approach it? Um, See, as I, as I mentioned, there are, there are um, some VCs here in Greece um that are focused on different stages of a uh, company so for early stage scale up etc um what we tell them is that okay don't go after all the vcs that are available in the market or after all the angel investors out there uh seek those that have let's say a portfolio that's similar to yours or you've seen the founders um background and see if it's something close to you know where you're operating in. Uh, for example, if there is a fund that the founders are from the marketplace industry and you're a marketplace, seek for their funding and not um, you know, VCs with a different portfolio um, because they're gonna offer the net, their network. 
Um, they're going to have the insights of a similar business. Um, so it, it, making mistakes will be, a, a, let's say, a lower um, percentage of mistakes yeah. and, um, let's say, wrong decisions and wrong insights. Um, yeah. So seeking the investors that either have the background or the portfolio of investments closer to um, where you are, where you're running, mm -hmm. go for that money and um, seek mentorship that can mm -hmm. attract this kind of funding as well. Um, because you can, you, can, you can get funds even from a bank somehow, you'll, you'll find a way. You'll <laughs> put a mortgage on your house and you'll get the funds for your startup, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not smart money there. They're, they're just gonna give you the funds and that's it. You want someone to be by your side, um, raise a flag when they see something wrong with your PNL, when they see when they see some trends in your data, and that's why we keep on telling them it's very important to to track your data from day one. Um, I know it's difficult for those running a startup because it's basically yeah. the founders and they have to do everything from marketing, from PNL, from you know financial, from mm -hmm. product development. But we say from day one, uh, keep track of your data. And once you have someone on board to support you, either it's a mentor or, um, let's say, uh, your the investors, give that data to them. Give them a clear, transparent view of um, how you're operating because they have the experience to see changes in your, in, in, in your data and raise that flag when something is going wrong. Yeah, I think this is a great piece of advice. Uh, if you focus on data, you focus what what you're looking for. Um, the probability that you hit the target is increases, but also the impression that you make. You don't say, "Yeah, we're looking for some opportunity to get some funds in order to do this option, this option, or this option." You say, "Okay, I'm looking for X amount to reach this milestone, and then we'll have another milestone. Then we'll launch the product." Like. Uh, you have to quantify it also by numbers. I think that's a great yeah. piece of advice. Uh, if you have this data, right? If you have the data, people will listen more uh, with more attention. And, and it's easier uh, for them to understand the value of what exactly. you're doing. So in, in the end, they're investors. They, they're not your godparents that they're going to give you money because they like you. Yes. They want to see the value behind your business and if they're going to make money. And if they're going to make money with lower risks, it's easier for them to, you know. Exactly. <laughs> and if you can articulate the data, they understand that you understand what you're talking about. Exactly. And that increases the confidence that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Uh, let's let's move to uh, ecosystem projects. You were involved in a dozen of ecosystem projects. Yeah. What are ecosystem projects? I mean, people perceive it as. Uh, they want to start up ecosystem in their city, in their mm -hmm. village, <laughs> I don't care, but mm -hmm. on the regional level. But there are also ecosystem projects around um, a topic, around the vertical, mm -hmm. and it's not restricted to geographical uh, boundaries. So what, what, what kind of project you are involved in and what do you understand in, uh, upon like an ecosystem project? Yeah. Um, so personally, I've been involved in many projects, uh, ecosystem building projects. Um, of course, in the startup industry at the macro or micro level. So either, you know, small cities or municipalities in a larger region, or of course across Greece mainly and in the States. Um, and then agrotech, as well as I mentioned earlier. Um, so it's on a more vertical basis per industry. And um, at the city level where I was um, running some uh, ecosystem building projects, it uh, was based mainly on civic engagement, having people understand um, how, um, let's say, public sector works and how people can be involved and kind of connected dots between the, the key players of how a city works. So um, what we perceive as ecosystem building is bringing these key players together and creating, um, collaborating, creating projects. And let's say ultimately, uh, why not uh, offering and public uh, advice as well uh, and policy making um, because the ecosystem has that power. If it's well organized, if it's collaborating with transparency and has the appropriate tool, tools to work together, 
ultimately the ecosystem itself could create the policies that is needed for them to you know move forward right so you mentioned um like agri-tech or mm -hmm. agro what what kind of project was it was it kind of Ag like agri tech, food tech startups, or more traditional ones, or you brought them together? It's more traditional ones that uh, we want to kind of infuse technology and innovation in traditional agro uh, companies, businesses. So this is this is a project that is started on a local level in Southern Peloponnese, mm -hmm. and uh, what we want to do is connect people from academia, uh, business people um let's say production units um farmers um and offer them connect them together um and offer them uh, education tools so they can advance their ecosystem um and uh, create a value for uh this sector so where you bring also like how do you how, how do, do you bring that? the technology like yeah. how... <laughs> So uh, what we everything started mainly through trainings in the beginning. So like let's say small meetups um, where we would host speakers in the innovation mm -hmm. sector or entrepreneurs in the agro tech. Uh, so you're bringing them together with uh, startup companies or other companies or yep. innovate companies. All right, okay. And our main focus is to bring these key players in one room. So. Of course, they have the training, but the value mm -hmm. comes after that when they're in the room together and they have to exchange opinions and insights. And when they start working together, because you know we're talking about people that haven't met each other before, they yeah. consider themselves competition. And so, here, especially in Greece, competition means we want you not to succeed; we want you to fail badly. But um, what we want to change in this mentality is that, okay, of course we're competitors, but in a global market, if we don't work together, we're not going to be successful or the, the, the rate of success will be a lot lower. So we bring them in the same room and ultimately they, they partner up, they, they work together and uh, with, through the, the, these trainings, start using tools that will help them be more efficient, be more sustainable, um, have a, a higher quality in their products um and of course a culture shift in how they work we've seen how they changed the total totally their approach with their employees with their teams and how they work um it's a lot more transparent there's a better communication uh, they're more efficient as a team and this is something that requires a lot of effort and it will take time it's it's it's, it's a new let's say it's a new project so so you bring together a traditional business like traditional business owners with innovative companies mm -hmm. and you said they start working together um, um let's let's ma make a step back um it's i'm comparing this probably with something that is germany called mittelstand mm -hmm. and let me describe one experience so we had a meetup there were people from these traditional small businesses and I asked them, how do you like? Oh, it's great here. And I was like, how can we help you, right? The community, how can we like, what, how can we serve you? And this guy said, no, no, that's the wrong question. You have to ask me how I can help you. So uh, we don't need help. We know <laughs> like this attitude, it was so like, it was not nice. It was actually not collaborative, but how, how did you overcome this? This trust, this competitiveness, what you said, what you said, they want to to see you fail. Um, was this the format? Was this the frequency? Was there the uh, the situation, the crisis? What what broke this barrier of this trust? I th I think it's a little bit of everything. So, like, uh, I'll speak and for involved and for different activities that we've done. You got to bring food and drinks with us for these meetings. If you have food, they'll sit and listen to you, and um, it'll, it'll help you know do your things a lot easier. Because we're Greeks in the end. Uh, when sitting at a table, it you know we come together. It's a lot easier to you know put down our guards and collaborate. So especially with the more traditional businesses in the agri tech sector where we have a lot of farmers, food is there for sure. 
um, but um, where they see themselves kind of not less competitive, uh, less competitive is um, through discussing that they have a common problem, common issues that they can't solve themselves by themselves. They haven't found someone to help them solve it. So they want to kind of find a solution by exchanging ideas. And, you know, with the crisis, it kind of made them sit together in the same room and discuss because okay. um, there, there are less opportunities. There were less opportunities, uh, of course, uh, limited resources. So they sometimes they had to split up the cost to go to global exhibitions. So uh, sitting in the same room helped a lot. Um, and this was our ultimate goal with everything. We sit with them, we're at the same level. You won't see us at a podium uh, speaking and you know, giving long speeches. Um, what we wanna do is to sit at the same level uh, and let's say start a conversation, open the communication. And um, we offer our you know, presentation do's and don'ts and they start up in, in the business uh, in businesses. But we, we kind of like tailor made that based on the companies that we're, we're at the same table at. Uh, we want to see what are their needs, what are their concerns, um, how our insights can kind of help them find the, the you know the answers to their problems. And it, it's 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 let's say uh, I don't know how the term is in in, in English, but it's uh, a method of Socrates. You give them the you make the questions, they have to find the answers. So we you know set the questions so they can start finding to the solutions to their problems, reaching out to find. The people that will help them, you know, get to, uh, you know, where they want to get. I think you you mentioned a common problem. That's that's actually a good starting point. Um, but how do you move them towards a solution? Was it kind of a natural process, or uh, like, do, did you like do you have to moderate it? Um, we leave it up to them. So okay. what we say is that. Okay, we have some resources, especially for those who are in an earlier stage. We have a, a, a pool of people that can we can connect you if you need any kind of, let's say, networking or you know, expertise from specific uh, uh, professionals. Um, we offer the educational opportunities, the webinars, trainings. Um, we host the one-to-one -one meetings. With, you know, uh, we, as I said we're an open team. So we want them to come to our office or book online a uh, meeting with us so we can give them live feedback. But in the end, it's up to them how they're gonna utilize and leverage on all this, uh, let's say resources that we offer them. Um, because that's the way they're gonna learn. If, if, you, if you give them all the solutions, give them all the resources, what's left for them to do? Just build a product and launch it in the market? No, you're not an entrepreneur in that case. If there's no risk. Um, I don't think you understand the importance of survival and uh, creating a product that the market really needs. And as I said, you have to learn it the hard way, uh, the entrepreneurial. <laughs> that's a good one. You have to learn the hard way. Yeah. Wow. There's, there's so many learnings on my page is full. I think um, like the key, one of the key learnings for me is um, like create, like moving things around, like bringing people together that don't meet each other uh, generally and uh, kind of creating a common theme. So they are kind of united for this moment and just let them um, be themselves. And yeah, you just let the process flow, right? We don't um, want to impose our, our way of thinking yeah. to them because each, each let's say industry or, uh, ecosystem or location has their own culture, their own way of doing business, their own way of communicating. So what we want to do is, as I mentioned earlier, it's like the movie Inception. We, we just mm -hmm. plant it there and it's up to you what you're going to do with that kind yeah. of story you're going to create. And of course, you know, always know that we're by their side if, if there's anything needed. And that's why a lot of municipalities, for example, a lot of cities have reached out to us so we can do together a lot of work uh, in building and supporting their ecosystem. Uh, one last question, and I open to the uh, discussion. What you what you're saying? It seems like maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, it seems like this established, um, like or classical business um, organization, let's say, 
um, they are more open, so they don't, like you say, we don't impose solution, but like, do they impose also their experience or are they more open and say, okay, let's learn from each other? Because um, I think that's a big problem in Germany that the, the elder, uh, elder say, okay, we'll know everything. So we don't have to, to learn new stuff. Um, but it sounds like it's a bit different in Greece. I, I think they're a lot, they're a bit more open um, mm -hmm. and expected, especially in the traditional you know, business, businesses speaking, uh, businessmen or businesswomen. Um, they're a lot more open because uh, they, they, they see the difference, the cultural difference between, uh, you know, the typical business and a startup business. Uh, yeah. As I say, when you're in the startup industry, it's like art. You have to be creative. And usually it's people that want to kind of bring that creativity into the market, creating a new product or a new methodology. And for us in the support side, we do feel like we're art, we're artists, um, you know, well, you have to, it's like you're designing, it's like you're drawing and you, you want to draw something that people want and like. Um, and um, this is what I think the traditional businesses see that they, they, they see that um, it's, uh, let's say it's kind of more liberating from their corporate way of working. And, you know, when you're in the corporate environment, you have a specific task, you have a specific methodology. You're not supposed to go, you know, drive, you know, course around, you know, differently. And um, you have to follow um, your superiors, um, especially when you're working in a global corporation, you usually have to kind of just execute it's rare when you are able to create and design and strategize. And yeah. I think it's something that kind of, let's say, I put, I put quotes on this, the envy in the startup market where it's totally opposite. Um, mm. There's a lot of creative creativity, um, teams work together. Um, it doesn't matter which level you are, if you're a CEO, co-founder, or you're just a developer, um, they all work to work together. Um, and delivering something that the market needs. Yeah, I think that's great. Like comparison to to artists, where you, well, what I'm referring to is better this so like someone who know it knows it all. Like, and we have to move to to more learning experience. Like, learn it all uh, better, better. There are many. There are many businesses, yeah. corporations, larger, larger corporations that, um, that want to kind of incorporate innovation thinking. Um, first of all, as part of HR, so here in Greece at least so you have I, I can't I think I can't, that's not easy I think that's just not easy it's not easy but you know it, we've had large companies reach up to us and say uh, I want you to design a contest for our employees so they can um, you know create innovative approaches for our business first of all because you might create a new product for they might create a new product for the business and that's one thing that they can mm -hmm. win and secondly, it's, it's um, let's say a team building opportunity because they have to work in teams. So HR wise, it's great. And um, on the other hand, you, it's, it's, it's a way to have your employees motivated and kind of yeah. leave from that day-to-day you know, -day corporate uh, yeah. tax. They get to be creative. So, so I, I think- Purpose, stay creative purpose, yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think they're slowly more open to innovation processes and activities in typical established corporate uh, business. All right. Um, all right. I would like to open the uh, open it to, to, to discussion. Please unmute yourself when you have a question. Maria, thank you very much. That was really interesting. Um, I have two questions, but they kind of zoom out a bit again, um, I think. So one is, um, as you were talking about the uh, agrotech uh, sector, especially, um, how is it about, um, like, um, do cooperatives, for example, join ecosystems or other initiatives, like other forms uh, other than uh, like companies or um, startups? Yeah, so um, 
specifically for the cooperatives, um, they do participate in these activities because uh, they try to find value and kind of maximize the impact of, um, of their cooperative and be more efficient so they can limit the, ex limit the expenses because in a cooperative, it's like your company as well and with people that might not always cooperate well. Um, but um, there are a lot of tools for cooperatives. There are a lot of initiatives for cooperatives to um, kind of, let's say, um, um, bring innovation in how they work, um, kind of split, up, split out the costs. And um, that's why we see an increased interest by them uh, for these activities. Um, because it's it's easier to, to kind of integrate these new tools that are available in the market. And in the agri-tech sector, you know, equipment is expensive. So in a cooperative, it's a, it's a lot easier to bring these new equipments and these new technologies in the production process. So we, we see an increased interest from them as well. And it, it's, it's changing uh, how the industry works because in Greece, a lot of cooperatives are were bankrupt. They would owe a lot of money to farmers. Um, the Let's say the terms with the uh, with the sellers and the buyers were not always fair favorable towards the farmers and there's an amazing it's it's a great um let's say business case is the cooperative of la mia stevia it's uh, the stevia sugar i don't know if you have it there in germany um they they yes. produce uh, stevia in la mia it's in central greece um, my geography is terrible but whatever <laughs> <laughs> but um they've done an amazing job they've first of all the farmers are active in the business they're open they've created their local ecosystem hosting speakers and supporting other entrepreneurs there um they have um created a beautiful brand they this brand was is something oh you found it <laughs> um they this brand has been something that is marketable that's already in in the major supermarkets here in Greece. And it's a great and a great case of utilizing innovation and um, offering the opportunity to kind of change the ecosystem. That's so cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I could really go in depth uh, about this a bit um, because I'm kind of involved in a co-op myself here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I'll come to the second question and then uh, other people can as well because time is short. So second thing, zoom out a bit more again. Um, what's your experience with uh, with women in, in ecosystems? Like we have this meeting here and you can see um, that's yeah. the kind of uh, the ex experience uh, I think we had in a lot of places. So how is it in Greece? Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, well. I think the start the peep map has done a, let's say, a research on that. And Greece yeah. is kind of, is, is a lot more favor, favorable for uh, women co-founders and founders. Um, so it's easier to work here. Of course, there are, the, you know, the challenges that women have in the business world and the uh, startup world, especially if it's women that is in the tech industry. But um, I see that uh, there are strong, we, I have many cases of strong women in uh, in the in in the Greek startup ecosystem uh, that are leaders um, that have strong opinion that uh, have great insights and um, they have the potential to be very successful in global markets. Of course, um, it's not always easy. Um, usually, in, in our events, there is a good representation of women. But of course, it's still a, 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 an issue that we have to tackle. Um, uh, I think we had our one of our events was a week ago. It's this uh, entrepreneurship unplugged. We hosted an online um, event on Facebook and on Zoom, and it was a great, uh, let's say, balance of women. We had um, from Microsoft, from Global Shapers, uh, women from Wise Greece and social entrepreneurship. So we've got tech, social entrepreneurship. Of course, um, um, the Global Shapers, and um, we have our winners. We have a good rate of uh, 
of, of women. Uh, I think it's the, the rate is around 59% as well. Wow. Women. So it's, it's, it, it's, it's a good, it's, it's changing. That's changing as well. Because mm -hmm. you would see, especially the VCs or mostly men. Now that's changed as well. So the investors, you see a lot of women investing in the investment teams and in the teams with analysts. They're the people that are deciding where they're going to put their money. And it, it makes it a, a much better environment for women founders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, just to continue on that, what were the, the attractors? Um, the attractors that um, kind of... Um, so what I learned is that language is different, like for women, between women. Uh, are there any any observations that you made? What attracts or, or like sparks interest to to connect with the community, to go to events, etc. Um, do, do you mean like for specifically for women or for? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, I, I mean just what what I learned. Like, we had this this meetup with a successful um, female entrepreneur, and she said, "Like even if you write let's do or let's build, it does not attract women. Like they don't like it's, it's not their um, <laughs> their <laughs> nature um, or let's disrupt or something like." That. So it's kind of also when you communicate, um, like, or you want to promote an event. Paying attention to to wording might be helpful to 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 have this balance. For us, I don't think that's the case here in Greece. Okay, yeah. I, I I definitely believe that's not the case because we haven't had a specific wording for women. Um, I think especially women in the, in the in the startup industry, you'll see they're they're very aggressive in in, in a positive note. They're okay, outspoken. Cool. They're very firm in what they're saying. They're strong, opinionated. Um, you can tell by their body language that they're like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that word, they're boss ass bitches, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, you, you, I think it's a cultural thing too. Mm -hmm. Greek women in the patriarch uh, family was the one in charge of the, of the household. She's the one that cooks, that works, that you know, um, makes children study, you know, be successful. And translating that into the business world, she's the one that's doing all the hard work. Um, that um, you're reaching out to people for for support. I think it's it's a lot easier for us. I don't want to be a you know, try to create stereotypes, but mm -hmm. I think for us women, it's a lot easier to ask for help. We're not we don't mm -hmm. feel that we're less womanly or less manly, or whatever. <laughs> if you ask for help, uh, sometimes yeah. it's not a status quo because sometimes men do not want to seem that. They're weak, let's say. So for us, it's a lot easier for women to to reach out and network. Um, but of course, it's not always a favorable favorable environment um, because there are the stereotypes that we have to tackle that women can be successful businesswomen, uh, can be can run a bit business, can have other women in their teams because there's always like it's a cultural thing that women do not cannot cooperate with other women. So these are stereotypes that they have to kind of tackle. And um, especially when you want to kind of attract investments, mm -hmm. I've, I've read a lot of studies that say that uh, a lot of women had a hard time gaining uh, trust by investors. Here in Greece, it's not much that the case, but um, there, it's, not, it's, not, it's not heaven, of course. There are a lot of issues. And in networking events, of course, you see a lot of men, um, especially if it's after work. Uh, but um, I, I believe it's an environment, it's still an environment that is welcoming to women. Um, men are not, in our industry, are not that judgmental. And there is a lot of openness. Yeah. So I believe it's... Okay. Cool. Okay, so are there other questions? You can unmute yourself and ask uh, Maria a question or two. Like, take this opportunity. Okay, I have then probably the final question. So um, you've been to many countries, you have multiple collaborations, you've traveled a lot, you've seen different ecosystems. 
what makes the Greek ecosystem different? Mm. If if you can generalize it, that would be that would be cool. What is what is different? Because when you said you have now a common goal and you go out and and connect with the international community. So um, what is the uh, uh, uniqueness of this segment? I mean, you, you told already some unique features, which, which, is, which is great, like uh, the role of women in the society that switching roles to entrepreneurship might be not uh, such a barrier than in other countries. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 it's not just one thing. See, that's the case. Yeah, um, yeah. What what I what I find very interesting is, first of all, um, you know, the weather helps a lot because yeah. it's easier for you to go out to these after work uh, yeah. events, networking, networking events. Um, there are many many conferences around startup and innovation industries, uh, so that creates a great opportunity for the market. Um, so. The exchange of ideas is like it's constantly mm. it's yeah. not just once or twice a year it's every week every day uh, there's a lot of openness as i said as i mentioned mm. um, people are approachable investors are approachable mm. uh, which is very important um and um i, ha I have to kind of highlight the you know I, th I think it's a unique characteristic i don't know what's going on with all the other countries but what i can say about greece is it's not just Athens, it's not just the Saloniki that, you know, are exporting innovation and startups. There are other cities that, that are following and uh, they're leading in some industries. Patra, it's in Peloponnese. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the Greek map, but it's, uh, it looks like a, a hand. Patra is in the, in the top part of that. It has great, 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 great success stories in hardware, in um, technology, in health, medical technology, Ioannina, which is in the western part, northern western part of Greece, there are leaders there as well. Xanti, which is on the northern east, uh, close northern east borders of Turkey, um, they're 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 creating uh, great, 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 great initiatives in the tech industry, in Crete, med tech uh, marketplaces e-commerce, um, you know, I think this is a unique characteristic about, you know, about Greece that there are opportunities, not only in the capital of Athens, of Athens and, and especially for those who are seeking to work in Greece, like the digital nomads that, you know, we keep on saying is that here in Greece, you can do this wherever you are, either you're in the islands or you're in the northern part of Greece, or you're in the capital or you're in the southern part of Greece, you will find people in the innovation industry that will relate, you can relate, you can work with and um, exchange ideas and insights and use their resources. In, in my hometown in Kalamata, close to my hometown in Kalamata, Southern Peloponnese, um, there's a co-working space, which is unthoughtful. <laughs> Co you know, when you would say co-working space here in Greece, they were, this, uh, this isn't something that was close to our culture. And now you see this in the smaller cities, not just in the capital of Athens. And you see people choosing to work in these places. And I, I think this is something I might, I might kind of highlight. Great. So you have the perfect recipe for a vibrant ecosystem. You have a great lifestyle uh, that Greece offers and also the openness of people and uh, the, the exchange of ideas. And uh, I think that's a great recipe, but um, I would like to read more stories about those success, um, successful uh, companies. Uh, never heard about them. Mm -hmm. So I hope in future you'll tell more stories about them because um, this is what, what, what matters. Um, so it's, it, it's, now I'm curious about those companies that you, that you told me. There, there, are many yeah. there are many companies uh, in, in i think that's Europe. that's a problem in europe because everyone's communicating in their local language and i i like i'm not good at french i'm not uh, it's english right um so yeah. um i know a couple of words in greece uh, uh in greek but uh, it's not like that i can read 
Uh, cool. But the All good right, thing so, is yeah. that most of the people, they know English. It's, it's something that you have to know English from school. So it's, it's, it's something that if someone wants to work here, it's not like other countries where you speak English and yeah. they're snobs and they don't want to speak in English. Here, the, the, their level of English, yeah. English is, is an adequate level and you can do business and that's important. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, okay. So I think that's great recipe for, for an ecosystem. And when I want to make uh, you and your team, I think mean, those guys were executing like hell. Like yeah. it was a workshop and in parallel, they are organizing a big conference review and business plan so you're you're, you're very um efficient <laughs> yeah it was that was a crazy period because we were reviewing business plan we were editing videos we were hosting our annual awards so yeah. we had to organize all things and, and we wanted to work with you and meet you all a lot better so uh, we didn't want our you know business to kind of uh not meet your expectations in the yeah. program and what you're doing is really amazing really amazing yeah what well, exactly so uh, what i mean is like this spirit of of getting things done i think that's uh what i experience um in interaction with with you and your team like getting things done going out putting out the messages and the achievements um yeah. that could be a usb all right um maria thank you very much I think we can, um, oh, thumbs up from Marina. I think we can make a photo uh, yep. so we can post it on, on Facebook and other uh, social media channels. So people who were in the background, if you could uh, show your faces, that would be great. Uh, 